go again. And I mean, I'm repulsed, right? <laughs> but I don't really have anything else going on that morning. So I figure, no, close my eyes. <laughs> so he reaches in for a kiss. And I guess something must have um, died in his mouth or something. Like, like, I don't know if a possum got in there or what, but it was not good. So I get up and I go crack open a spare toothbrush and I come out and I try to be all cutesy with her, right? Like, hey, big boy, here comes the train open for my like So he gets up and he goes and brushes his teeth. Turns out there weren't that many left to brush. And then I take one for the team, the team in this case being you guys, because we all know bad decisions make good stories. Okay, well. <laughs> Total visual right there. You know when you can imagine what she's talking about. I love it. All right, we have with us Chantal Desjardins. She's a comedian at Yuck Yucks. And listen, if you want to catch the show this Saturday, or which will be tomorrow, we are giving away, they, she is giving away, two, three pairs of tickets. You need to call 613-236-5233. Code word daytime. Two tickets are yours. So give that number a shout. Two tickets for tomorrow's uh, Yuck Yuck show. She's with us, Chantal. Welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me. Okay, I love when I read your, you know, little bit of a bio. You were in the media for 12 years. You were kind of doing what I'm doing. Just yep. doing the TV thing, and you did sports broadcasting as well, which means I you know did. all about sports. I'd love to hear your take on the Sens later. <laughs> okay. uh, how do you go from that to stand-up comedy? You know what? I kind of fell into it. I really? never had any desire to do it. And I was doing the morning show in Montreal on a rock station. I was telling this funny story. I'd just gotten divorced. And this comedian walked in because he was a guest on a show like down the hall. And he walks in. He's like, you're funny. He's like, have you ever thought about doing stand-up? And I was like, never. And he's like, I'll tell you what. His name's Joey Elias. He's like, I teach a class on Monday nights. And I'm like, well, you can't teach funny. Like, it, it yeah, just, well, that's... he's like, come one time. If you don't like it, I'll never buggy again. Okay. I showed up at his class. There's like 15 of us. Just kind of like, you know, trying stuff out on stage. Yeah. And I liked it. Six weeks later, I did a friends and family night, and three people came up to me after and hired me based on that set. And I was like, you can make money doing this? Turns wow. out you don't make that much money doing it. No. But it's, it's very much. But it's a plus. You know, I think a lot of times just, you know, it's one thing to sort of be funny in, in say, one sentence. Like, you know, this is sort of what I do. So sure. sometimes you can be quirky, and it's, but to be able to sustain, you know, how long is a set? Um, I do 15 minutes. So let's say 15 minutes. And it has to, you know, people don't want just one funny line. They expect to be funny. Like, how stressful it's, is that? It's almost a science. Like, when you're writing, really? it's like a laughs per minute thing. Like, I don't know how the clubs do, like, they monitor how they get their talent in. But for me, I notice I'll watch back all my sets, and I try to get a laugh every, like, 10, 15 seconds. Wow. And it's really hard because I'm a storyteller. I don't tell jokes. I tell stories that happen yes. to me. And so it's all about punchline or little punches throughout yeah. the story so it's actually I find that part fascinating it's not just getting up and entertaining people which is like you know the most nerve-wracking thing I've ever done like I've done live national TV yeah this is more nerve-wracking oh, for I'm a sure. group of 30 people sitting in the audience or in the case of Yuck Yucks it'll probably be a couple hundred but like way more nerve-wracking than sure. you know I've done Hockey Night in Canada in front of a three million people and this is crazy I feel like it's just the biggest adrenaline rush I've ever had incredible and you really when you're up there the stories you tell they relate to you yeah they're your stories yep. and I read it's you know about divorce and dating that's that's sort of the big thing that you went through when you started and that's where you're Comedy lies, and well, I, I can see, I can see <laughs> the comedy almost. Well, I hadn't been single since I was 17, and suddenly I'm, you know, in early 30s. I'm trying to date again, and I, I'm so like a fish out of water, and I'm going for beers with my girlfriends, and I'm telling them these stories, and they're cracking up, and they're like, you have to tell these stories on stage, just because wow. it's such a different perspective at this point of your life, you know? And so I would, I started to tell stories. Like, I, I, I tell everybody that I'm, I go on a date with that there's a chance if this goes sour, your story's gonna end up on stage. Well, it's kind of like Taylor Swift writing about her, <laughs> her boyfriends. You're, exactly. you're dating and, you know, you might be joking about them right. later. Yeah. But isn't it, do you find that if you, tr if you do the comedy based on your truth, that it's easier than trying to come up with something? Sure, for sure. And now, you know, now I'm, I'm dating somebody, but it's still all these stories about, you know, my dating life up until this point. And it's just, it's such a fun way to connect with the audience, you know, because it is your truth. Absolutely. Okay, what would be the big, big difference between doing TV and doing this kind of thing? What do you think the biggest differences are? Well, uh, when we do TV, when I did TV, you can think you are the funniest thing ever, right? And you make a joke and you're like, that was amazing. And you'll never know. 
with stand up, you know right away if your joke is funny or it's not funny. And it's the same with radio. Like you make a joke, you think you're funny on, on radio, and you, you'll never know right away what the immediate reaction is. There's something about that immediate reaction, seeing their face when you hit a punchline, you're like, that was amazing. And they're like, no, it wasn't. You know, and it's just like, it's so humbling. And what, what, there you are. Look at you doing sports stuff. That's, oh, there I am. That was you before. Yeah. Look at you. Yeah. I, and did you, were you allowed to be funny here? I was. It's just a different set up though yes. right because there's so many different moving parts involved and there's so many people that you have to throw to it's a lot of like logistics yes. of moving through things so there's not a lot of time where you're just sitting there and you're able to let your personality shine you're on stage it's all you so it's, one it's man show it's you. all you you can you know? sort of time it the way you want yeah so it's it's a whole different like i, I really enjoyed doing hockey yeah, but it's, it's about you know you and these a couple other guys and you're you're getting their you know professional opinion on whatever's happening in the game there's not a lot of time to just you yes. know chat and make and you know, sort of be you and be you Fine. right yeah. whereas now 15 minutes it's all me okay so what about have that happened where you kind of think you've got something really funny going on and then it's not so funny yeah it's it's crazy sometimes i can do the exact same set on a friday and a saturday friday gangbusters like it's just it's it's everybody's laughing everybody's clapping everybody's crying they're laughing so hard and you're like this is great and then saturday different crowd maybe you know that something happened during the day they're just in a different mindset they don't think it's as funny i can deliver it the exact same way crickets and how do you how does that make you feel does that like bring up or do you just not I, great just, no, yeah <laughs> like drinking a cocktail or six uh it's it's really about not what i'm still trying to learn is not getting too high and not getting too low yes. because i'm very easily excitable so when yeah. i have a good show i'm like this is all i want to do for the rest of my life and then if you have a show where they're not laughing as much you're like i'm going to become an accountant yeah <laughs> you know? well, there's listen there's some comedy in that i'm sure just ask my husband <laughs> okay so before we run out of time tell us what's next for you what's coming up so I'm still doing a little bit of TV. I work mm -hmm. for a, a station called Poker Vision Network. So I'm doing some poker TV, which nice. is kind of fun because there's so many characters in poker, right? Yeah. Uh, and then I'm just, I've got about 30 more shows coming up. I've had about 40 comedy shows in the last couple months. Wow. And in New York next week. And uh, we'll see from there. I've... I love it. I want everybody to go see you. So Chantal Desjardins will be live May 12th and 13th at Yuck Yucks, which is on Elgin Street. Uh, if you've got the number at the top of the show, that's the number to call to get your set a pair, yourself a pair of tickets we wish you all the best well thank you very no, much no crickets for your next show okay? well thank you all right <laughs> we're there. gonna take a quick break and when we come back we're talking to a food media specialist staying healthy while you're on the road stay tuned